Welcome to Perspectives. I'm Bob Lebzelder, and our guest today is State Representative John Patterson. And uh, John, welcome to the show. Uh, you were just on a statewide press conference. Talk about that a little bit. That's correct, because yesterday the Senate dropped the companion bill to our uh, school funding bill, HB 305. You'll see it in the Senate is uh, Senate Bill 376. And this would uh, long address 20, 20 some years now uh, the unconstitutional na nature of Ohio school funding. The four DeRolf cases would all be put to bed finally if we could get this new school for funding formula implemented. This dates uh, to the 90s, right? 1997, but yeah. it's counting, right? <laughs> uh, government moves slow. Yes, this has been a, a monumental effort. Bipartisan, the uh, House bill that was introduced earlier had uh, two-thirds of the members of the House on it as co-sponsors. The Senate bill that was dropped had the majority of the senators on it as well. So there is a strong appetite to get this done, knowing how important it is, not only for our students, because one of the key components of this is to actually uh, establish a, a base cost. What does it cost to uh, educate a student? That was one of the original holdings of the DeRolf case. Mm -hmm. that there was never a, a base cost established. But the other side of the coin is, once we've established what a district ought to pay, is, or what it costs to educate a student in that district, is what is a district's real uh, capacity or ability to pay. And we have addressed that in this particular formula, too. So it's fair for the kids, fair for the taxpayers, and great for the state of Ohio because, Bob, quite frankly, schools are right now forced to... Uh, engage in a five-year forecast, but they only have a two-year state budget, so they never know if money's coming from the state. This would yeah. allow for the predictability that schools would need to uh, better time their uh, levy initiatives, and thus, by by the, the, the ability to better predict what their needs will be, there will be less levy competition at the ballot. Or, or having to cut... cut uh, funding in the middle of the school year because the state all of a sudden is taking away money. Exactly, exactly. So it provides that that predictability all around. I'm really excited about it. I bet you couldn't tell. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, well, because because here's what's important: when the state cut funding uh, in the right after the recession, and that's what got me out of teaching and into this gig uh, as state representative. A quality education is critical, and, and, and for three reasons, Bob. A student must be educated, one, to be ready to go into the workforce, two, to be a fully functioning member of this great democracy. You have to have a basic education to be able to parse through all the rhetoric, all the falsehoods that are out there to arrive at a, a truth and then be a part of this great experiment. And then thirdly, a, a good education allows a student to experiment with different classes and courses so that they can find and hopefully match their 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 gift with their calling their 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 potential with their purpose and, hey. it, and, and their passion and and we've cut away some of those programs that have benefited kids for quite some time consumer science my goodness gracious vocational agriculture this is an agricultural county and we've cut those programs out because there wasn't the funding and Bob, I can tell you this, if we can help students match their gift with their calling and head out into the world, there'll be more productive workers, work will have more meaning, and they will be better able to contribute to and do their share to help sustain society in general if, if they feel passionately about the work they're doing and how that benefits others and brings meaning to their life. Well, how does this all impacted by the fact that you're a few weeks from ending your career in the, the legislature because of term limits? We talked about that. Three of the four of us, both Representative Shear, who now is my joint sponsor in the House, and Senator Lehner, who is a joint sponsor in the Senate, three of the, the four co-sponsors, main sponsors, are termed out. So it's imperative to get this done now. 
the budget the budget's going to have to be done in January, February anyway. And what we're doing is laying the groundwork, putting together a blueprint so that they won't have to think about doing this and just can allocate the money, what money they have, into this formula because the hard work will have been done. So are there, we're going to get this done now. Are there people, lawmakers, that are interested enough in this that are going to carry the ball once you're not there and the other the other two? Well, that's what that's another concern of mine. Somebody's going to have to pick up the torch, right? And uh, and and I don't know who that is yet. I mean, there are some who say they're going to, but but uh, this is consumed by legislative life because it's that important for our kids, that important for our state, and that important for our future. So, switching gears a little bit, talk a little bit about the election. I. I the people that you, the, the person you hoped was going to succeed you, did not win, but there was a heck of a turnout. Yes, we had over 71% in Ashtabula County, and that was wonderful. Uh, that's a real, as a former social studies teacher, that gets me all excited when people come out to vote. And that is the overarching principle that the glue, if you will, that holds this great uh, democratic experiment together is people going to the polls and expressing themselves in that fashion. And I congratulate everybody who went to the polls and cast a ballot. Have you talked at all to uh, Sarah Fowler Arthur, the Republican that is going to be replacing you and defeated uh, Richard Dana? No, I have not. Now, keep in mind, that result came out Tuesday, and today is only Friday. I've been preparing for this school funding thing uh, for quite some time, yes. the press <laughs> conference and the bill and such. And she, to her credit, I'm sure is still out uh, chasing down yard signs. You have to get those in. You have to get them stored uh, and out of people's yards. So for a candidate, and I can speak to this personally, I would spend the rest of the week after getting elected just chasing down sides. Uh, it, it's a glamorous life. <laughs> oh, my God. You go out and you scrounge the county, all these back roads and the main roads, looking for your signs because, quite frankly, uh, that money adds up. And it's important to get them out of the yards of people who are gracious enough to allow you to put one in in the first place. She is a member right now of the State Board of Education, so she should have some background on what's going on with education. Yes, yes. So that's a plus. Yes. And we're setting up. Hopefully she will be a guest next week on the program, and we'll learn more then. Uh, Wonderful. That's good. So, yep. Yeah, um, and maybe she'll be on as a regular, as, as you have, trying to inform people on what's going on uh, in the legislature. And Bob, as my time winds down, it has been my pleasure not only to serve my people, but to be out there with you uh, on this program and, and, and uh, it, to have that contact. I have been, uh, my constituents have given me an education as to what's important in their lives and what's important in their communities, and I am forever grateful for that. Well, I don't want to take too much time, but I remember I was at an event, a, a grand opening of something, and you were there, and somebody's driving by and sees you and pulls over, gets out of his car, jumps over, and gives you a hug. That was pre-virus. Uh, pre <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's important. I have been so blessed to serve all of my people here in the 99th District. I am going to miss that. So what are you going to do? Uh, whatever my wife tells me. But you're, you're not going to run for any more offices or anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know what I'm going to do, quite frankly. I'm so involved in this school funding. I have to get through uh, to January 1st. Then I want to take some time with Nancy. She's put up with a lot, uh, me being gone and such. Uh, and then I don't know what, uh, God will open a door or close a window. Uh, I'm open to a lot of things. Maybe you and, could do uh, some more biking in the spring. Yes, <laughs> I definitely want to get out. <laughs> oh my goodness, between the COVID and not getting enough exercise, I got to get back on the bikes real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I wanted to touch on, because we have never spoke about this, but the uh, first energy scandal, uh, Larry yeah. Householder, he's was reelected because the Democrats didn't run anybody against him, but he 
was his uh, House speakership was taken away from him. He was involved in what was a sixty million dollar bribe from First Energy to get a uh, billion dollar taxpayer bailout bailout passed uh, for the two nuclear power plants. You voted for the bailout, not knowing about the bribery, but you voted for it because it was going to save jobs and um, assure that we had a plentiful supply of electricity. So, so what do you make of all of this now? That's absolutely correct, and that's why I voted for it. 200 people every day leave Asheville County to work at Perry, and uh, with the uh, Petman project coming into Ashabula and the things that are coming to Conneaut as a result of the Reesburg gas pipeline, we needed an ample, reliable source of electricity, too. Uh, mm. Those two power plants also generate $30 million in taxes for our uh, local economies as well. I look for and I support repeal with replacement. We have to fix the damage that was done, but we also need to be cognizant of the, the, the uh reality that we all rely on electricity and until our portfolio our energy portfolio is more diversified uh and i know it's an aging nuke plant uh until we're ready to to have more solar and wind coming on and more of the natural gas fired uh, power plants uh is is coal is phasing out uh we just have to have nuclear as as part of our as part of our portfolio. So, a lot of work being done right now in Columbus. Uh, I'm not involved in that directly. I don't sit on that particular committee, but uh, I trust the people who are there. And we should have something, I would think, before the end of this general assembly to to fix what was wrong. Well, so when is, when does the general assembly uh, end the year? Whenever the speaker wants it to. <laughs> So right now we have uh, sessions scheduled, if needed, the week before Christmas, and uh, we might need to go right to the very end to get this done. But it depends on the uh, on the speaker. We were talking before about this, um, Larry Householder. Uh, he's still in the uh, House. He won't resign. And he was reelected because the Democrats didn't put anybody up against him. Apparently, they had to do that before this whole thing broke. So the idea is that the next term, they can remove him, and there's expectations that he'll be removed from office when he's yes. after he's sworn in January. You can only remove a member once. And uh, if we had removed him in this General Assembly, knowing he was on the ballot, he could come back, and there would not be another way. So they were kind of holding that off, uh, Republican leadership was. So we'll see what happens. Again, there are alleged charges, and we're all innocent until proven guilty. But Correct. Uh, two, two of the five have already uh, entered a plea bargain with the feds uh, relative to their, their roles in this scandal. So we'll see what happens. Were you shocked when you heard about all this? Did you have any idea? Were there rumblings? No idea. None. None. None of us did. Because he he was involved in some things before and, and was kicked out of office or the voters didn't reelect him or something and, and then he came back. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, you know, everybody, we have to be forgiving and uh, allow people a second chance and he was given a second chance so we'll, we'll have to see what happens from here okay. we want to get you back at least one more time and maybe talk about a little bit about comparing your two careers in education and as a lawmaker <laughs> and uh, we can't do that in, in 15 seconds I don't think and just maybe some of the high points of uh, your six years was it six years as a legislator, eight. 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 eight, eight. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I was never good at math. <laughs> well, we'll do that next time. Okay. All right, it sounds good. Thank you very much for being Thanks. here today, John Patterson, uh, State Representative on Perspectives. I'm Bob Lubzelder.